the school year has begun um and if you have a neurodivergent child child with special needs on the spectrum adhd whatever it may be um you have to make sure that not only you are advocating for your child but also that your child learns to advocate for themselves and when you have to contact the school you have to call things what for what they are you cannot sugarcoat things you have to call things for exactly what they are so i had to call my um daughter's school and she has the same counselor that she had from last year and she's terrible she was unsupportive she puts on a show she's not equipped and when i called the school i told them i want to know how i would go about getting her a new counselor because she was useless um she is not equipped she is not informed and she doesn't care and she gaslights children so before i go to the board i'm addressing it since it's the second day of school, and yes, I'm on your ass. My foot is on the gas. Because when you have a child that has an IEP, you have to stay on top of stuff. You cannot, your foot cannot be on the brakes. And it's exhausting. It messes with your nervous system, it messes with your mental health, it messes with a lot of things. At the same time, these people really don't care. Your child is a paycheck and a number. Now, in her elementary school, they cared more. The people that were there at the time. I don't know what they care now. But the people that were there at the time, this is not what I experienced. Same district, but it's a different school. It's a middle school now. Um, I have had people, I don't think that they are equipped for children with special needs at all, if I'm being completely honest and whether they're exhausted or whatever the case may be you know living in this district the amount of money that we pay to live in this area it makes no sense so you have to make sure you call things for what they are you have to um you don't have to curse either like uh, believe me there's plenty of times where i want to flip out but they want to label you as an angry person they want to label you as a problem so when you direct things and you're like no this is this person is inadequate they are useless they do not care and they have repeatedly shown that i don't care what your ass is doing as a counselor probably drinking coffee and eating a dozen donuts a day mm -hmm. that's all you do um you are not counseling anyone. <laughs> and I noticed that there's so many parents whose children do not get services properly, are not being handled properly. And I get it, we're tired. We're tired, we have our own lives, we have our own things we're, we're handling. But no, if you don't inform your child that this is not okay and that this is mistreatment, that the counselor should address this and they should feel safe and the counselor should be able to be trusted and they should follow through with you, then guess what happens? Your child thinks that this is an excuse and this behavior is okay. So not only do you have to inform your child because the world loves to gaslight, manipulate, and pretend shit don't exist, especially when you're dealing with children with special needs. A lot of places don't care. Now, I'm sure there are some that do. I've experienced, again, her elementary school cared at the time and the people that I had around me. So grateful for them. But most of the time, these people and places don't care. It's about the money. So not only do you inform the um, principal and all of these people and go over their heads, right? If you have to go to the Board of Ed, go to the Board of Special Education, go to the news if you have to. I don't care. It's about your kid. It's not about feelings. It's not about being uncomfortable. Be the storm that walks in that school that they know they have to take cover because you will make sure with your actions, not 
being irate and crazy, but with your actions and your foot on the gas, that you are going to handle them. So using the correct words and saying to your children, this is neglectful. This is a neglectful counselor. You have asked her for this, this, and this. She doesn't, she didn't help you. You have told her about this. She didn't help you. She went against this and went to someone else. She is not equipped to help you. So that your children do not think that this is acceptable behavior. Oh, okay, this is fine. No, none of it is fine. And even if your child is not receiving it right away, you you continue to speak on it and move differently so they know that that they have to advocate for themselves and that that's not okay and to go over the person or go to someone else. One day, we will be a memory to our children. We will not be here forever. They are people with their own journeys, their own souls, and they, we have to equip them the best way that they can. So, yeah, I mean, day two, you know, I definitely feel agitated and emotional because it's so frustrating to even have to stay on top of this. But at the same time, I don't care. And if you tell me no, that I can't switch the counselor, I'm going to go over you. And I don't like you and I don't care. So I'm going to make your job more uncomfortable because then your boss is going to be pissed that you're not equipped to handle it. So you don't just lay dormant. You don't just stand still and let these people stress you and your kid out. Your child deserves to reach their full potential. And it won't be with your foot on the brake with these people. You have to have your foot on the gas and you have to play chess. And you already won. Remember that moms and dads who are handling this.